I'm Evan, and today we're going to read and react to some of my old Goodreads reviews. The reason I'm doing this video is because I believe that my opinions have changed since I wrote these reviews. And it's not really to prove a point, but I just want to show an example of how reviews may not be the most truth that a person can do. For example, I don't really agree with most of the reviews I'm about to read. So I think it's important for us to realize and to see examples of people who may not agree with their own reviews that they had given and take that into consideration when we're reading reviews so that we're aware and read more critically other people's opinions. This can also help when you're trying to pick out a book and you see a bunch of bad reviews. Maybe those weren't books for them. Maybe those people sometimes like those books later. They change their opinion. They don't hate the book as much as they used to and you might still really enjoy the book. So let's take a look at some of my old Goodreads reviews and see if I still agree with myself. Here we go! So this review is um, two stars and it is Little House on the Prairie. And I was so salty when I wrote this and very full of myself. So I was given the Little House collection when I was about seven or eight. I was a fan of the TV show and the books were too hard for the other child. Wow, way to put down another person in my review. Great. Good job, me. Pat on the back. The mother knew I liked to read and gave the set to me. At the time, I was reading Great Expectations, Around the World in 80 Days, and The Hobbit. Why did I feel the need to brag in this review about eight-year-old me? Like, that's ridiculous. Little House is way too young for a well-read seven-year-old. The print is huge, the story is boring, and the reading level is low. I was very disappointed. I remember telling my mother and she read the books and also found them too young for me. This is a good book to read to a five-year-old. This would also make a good first book when graduating out of picture books. This is not a classic that could... This is not a classic that can be enjoyed by adults as well as children like Narnia or The, or the Hobbit. I do not recommend. That's a horrible review. First, it doesn't say anything about the content or if the story is even good. It's literally just the reading level. And I, I think now, me, now me, believes that a reading level shouldn't dictate whether a book is good or not. It shouldn't dictate the enjoyment that you get out of a book. And I was just obviously too snobby at this point in my life to realize that. Like, come on, I was, I was like bragging about reading Great Expectations. Like, me now, I really enjoy like picture books and kids books, especially ones that I used to read as a kid, um, and new ones. I really like the Steven Universe kids books. I, I really just don't agree with the me there. Now, I never actually read Little House on the Prairie because of this, so I really honestly think that this entire review should be deleted and has no bearing on anybody else and shouldn't be taken for, for anything. Um, probably after this video I'll go and delete it because yeah, that that's a dumb review and doesn't help anybody. The next one is the Twilight series, which I gave every single book two stars. And I didn't write any reviews for any of these books. I, I gave this book two stars uh, probably back when it was popular so it wasn't even like the time where the fallout of Twilight you know what I'm talking about where like everybody started to hate on Twilight this was more like oh it was okay for a vampire book like it's I, I would say it is a step lower than like your average vampire book such as Anne Rice so to me an Anne Rice vampire book would be a solid three it's some good, more modern vampire lore. It's not like uh, Dracula, where you're gonna have the horror vampire. It's more of a modern vampire where they're elegant and hot and a little bit gay. Like that's, to me, the more modern vampire. And Anne Rice's vampires, solid three stars. They're okay. The books are okay. They're interesting. They're a good read. They're not going to be like, the books that changed my life, but I really enjoyed them in high school and I would say that they're solid books. 
And Twilight, I think, uh, with their vampire lore and some of the other things where the books were just kind of boring at some points, just brought that down to a two. It took a solid vampire book and brought it down one star. So I, I don't think that I was really being unfair with the two stars. Twilight is a fun read, no hate, but I mean, it's not amazing. I would say that Twilight is actually a solid two stars along with the Anita Blake series, um, which I also just kind of feel is your run-of-the-mill werewolves and vampire story. It's not great. It's not bad. It's entertaining. It's good to read, but you know, it has some issues. A lot of same issues as Twilight, actually with the Nita Blake series. And then I'd put like Poppy Z Bright's Lost Souls vampires at like a solid four. I really don't think there's like any five star vampire books to begin with. So like the bar is already low. So like two stars for a vampire book really isn't that bad. It's not a one star vampire book, but, but there was one Twilight book that I did give one star to. And I'm just gonna have to trust past me that I got this right. So I gave Breaking Dawn one star. I don't remember if this is correct, but the reason I did this, and I, I hope past me did it correctly, and if I did it wrong, let me know in the comments that I need to change my one star to a different book. I feel like all the, the characters in Twilight are flat and boring, but I love Alice. I think Alice is one of the best characters in the entire series. I actually, if, if Stephanie Meyer wrote an entire series of just Alice and Jasper, I would be the biggest Twilight fan in the world. Like, I love Alice so much. <laughs> I think she's, her and Jasper are literally my reasons that I read all the Twilight books. I just wanted more of them. I could not get enough of Alice and Jasper. And in a supposedly uh, Breaking Dawn, I think, right? Breaking Dawn? Yeah, Breaking Dawn. She's gone. She's gone. If it wasn't Breaking Dawn, it was one of the books. She just disappears. Like, she's there at the beginning of the book and then she has some quests that she has to go on. So she like leaves and doesn't come back for the next book. Like she's just gone for the entire book or maybe she comes at the very end. But anyways, it's, an, it's a huge book, like 400 pages. I might be exaggerating and it maybe it just feels that way because there is no Alice <laughs> and I hated it. Yeah, so one of the Twilight books got one star is because Alice in and of herself is worth a full star. And if you get rid of Alice, then I don't care about your book anymore. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so my camera cut out and I don't know where I left off. Ha! Huh. What if it's us? I gave this four stars and I did it, I think, almost immediately after I finished the audiobook, which has amazing voice acting. The reading of this story is five stars, hands down. It's brilliant. It's really great. The voice actors are amazing. But the writing, the story, the theme, oh, okay. If a book is LGBT, it sort of gets an extra star from me. I already, I'm already into it. I'm already gonna like it. It's already my thing and I'm excited to read it. And I really love Simon vs. the Homo Sapien Agenda, which is one of the authors on this book. I never read anything um, by the other author, but I do have, they both die at the end in my library on Audible. I just haven't re read it yet. I'm in the middle of the City of Brass. So um, I wanna finish that before I move on, but I wrote, it, it's good. <laughs> I think I stick with that. I, th I think I, I still agree with the, it's good. <laughs> Theme is ham fisted into your face over and, wait, let me get a do over on this review. <laughs> just, just a little salty there. Okay, so it doesn't have that wonderful high school feel of Simon versus the Homo Sapien Agenda. And I've never read anything by Adam Silvera before, but it's not 
Becky Albertalli's voice 100% like some people try to say. If it was, it would have that feel of youth that this book lacks. Honestly, they feel like they were in university the whole time. I was honestly shocked when I found out they were in high school. Give it a try, it's an easy read, and the audiobook has amazing narrators. Just go in expecting a good book and not a great book. Okay, so I think the only thing that I would change about this review is I would give it um, three stars instead of four stars. I would actually knock it down one star just because I think I was really generous with that fourth star. It was okay, it was entertaining, but it was really ham-fisted. There's this theme of the universe and of do-overs, and I feel like three times in this short book would have been fine, but it's... It's like every, every two seconds they have to do a do-over, or the universe is doing something, and... Yeah. There's better books out there <laughs> that are LGBT and heck, there's better books by these authors that are LGBT. Okay, so the last book that I'm going to um, read my review for and react to is Fangirl, which I gave five stars and I think that is damn generous now. <laughs> look, look, I love Rainbow Row. I love so much, but Fangirl does not deserve five stars. I took a huge break in the middle of this book because I just couldn't get behind the main character. So from the first sentence of this review, I feel like it already should have lost a star. But I was just so in love with Rainbow Rowell and I was just, I couldn't bear that she would write a book that I didn't like, that I think I gave it five stars anyways. I liked her sister and her roommates and their friends, but I just couldn't like Cather. I really, really wanted to like her. I grew up on fanfiction and desperately wanted to bond with her. It took the whole book for me to like her, but the ending is excruciating. Ex ex but the ending is excruciating. Excruciatingly. But the ending is very beautiful and worth the read. An emotional roller coaster. I read Carry On first and then Fangirl, and I think that helped. I really loved Simon and Baz, and I ate up the fanfiction parts. Although I love Simon and Baz so much that sometimes it was hard to care about Cather and Levi. But that's really just my relationship with het pairings in general and nothing to do with Rainbow's writing. Actually, I really felt like she eased me into their het relationship and made sure I was comfortable. Five out of five, high recommend. So I, I don't know if you noticed there, but at the end, I was really just like, I really love Carry On and I really love Rainbow Rowell, so fangirl has to be okay too, right? And there were just parts in the story where I just felt like, why? Why, Rainbow? Why? I remember Kath, Cather, whatever, was talking about writing male-male pairings and how it was so hard because everything was he him and that made everything really difficult and i'm like uh and i really wanted to like fangirl because i i at one point in my life thought of myself as a fangirl i love fandom and i love fan fiction and i write fan fiction and i was like yes a story by somebody that can write something as good as carry on is talking about fandom and she puts fandom down like that's the problem is all these books just put fandom down and i don't think they mean to i think they're trying to talk about how the world sees fandom and how the world kind of just doesn't understand yeah i just i don't know how i feel about fangirl anymore i'll probably never read it again I don't know. The point is, is that Carry On is a great book and everybody should read it and the next like sequel to Carry On or something is coming out and yes, I am here for it. I still love Rainbow Rowell. Hey, if you did agree with this book or any of these books that I gave low stars to or high stars to, 
you know, that's that's great. We should have conversations and discussions about these books. And maybe there's something there that I didn't see and I didn't notice. And it would be great to talk to you about it. So uh, tell me how you feel about your old Goodreads reviews and if you really think that like you agree with yourself, your past self, and if you really do love or dislike those books as much as you did back then. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button, ring that dingy ding dong bell, and uh, share and you know, just just do do the thing. Do 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 the fun thing that that will help me out. That'd be great. So bye!